Bill Wells class is also working as a uh, resident. Tonight, we want to go back in history and speak with the men who once held the office of Detroit Mayor. I'm joined right now by our editorial director, Chuck Stokes, former Detroit Mayor Roman Gribbs, who was actually the last white mayor of Detroit, and that was nearly 40 years ago, former Mayor Dennis Archer and former Mayor Ken Cockrell, Jr. Gentlemen, thank you for joining us tonight. It's a pleasure. Nice to be here. Okay, Chuck, let's start with you. When huh? this mayoral campaign first started, I mean, uh, when Benny Napoleon and Mike Duggan first announced, we thought race would be a bombshell in, in this mayoral race, but it really hasn't been. Well, it hasn't been, and we also have to go back to the fact that both candidates played it down and said race is not a factor, should not be a factor, and our polling showed that if you ask the average Detroiter, they said that was not the key issue for them. It was about city services and quality of life. And Mike Duggan even said if he didn't have Detroiters backing him, he wouldn't run. He went out there, talked to the people, and said he did have the backing and decided to run. He did, and so far the polling is looking good for Mike Duggan. That was two weeks ago, the last poll we took. We don't know what it's going to turn out tonight. Mr. Gribbs, I want to ask you a question. Uh, you were mayor from 1970 to 1974. You didn't seek re-election, but Detroit has changed a lot since you were mayor. Oh. Uh, talk about some of the challenges you faced back then compared to now. Well, to begin with, the population was about a million four. Now it's 700 and some. And uh, the employees were 25,000. Now, as you're the mayor, you're in charge of those 25,000 people, which leads you, in any instance, but when you have a volume like that, you've got to have good lieutenants, good leadership for every department. And that was a major problem with that one. Also, at that time, you, you would remember that uh, two and a half years before that election, there was a huge riot in Detroit. Jerry Cavanaugh was the mayor, and mm -hmm. it broke his heart. Yeah, I'll remember and, that. And uh, there were, race was a major issue at that time, and it was a major concern of mine to make sure that the black community was involved. So one of the first things I did when I was elected was to appoint a black deputy mayor, Walter Green, an outstanding guy. And, and that's the story of my, my, my four years. I had great, outstanding people helping me. And what a lot of people don't remember is that when you got elected, you beat an African-American uh, Dick Austin. There you go. Only about 7,000 votes. Hey, and if he had won, he would have become the first African-American mayor. That's correct. Instead of Coleman Young. And he went on to a great career, Secretary of State for the rest of his life. He was a fine gentleman. And talk about a race not being an issue. We both decided it was not going to be an issue. Crime was the number one issue as far as the public was concerned. Yes. Yes, and indeed, crime and crime is still, is still an issue, number one issue yeah, all of our yeah. uh, Let me get Mayor yes, Archer as well as uh, uh, former Mayor Cockrell, now Councilman Cockrell, uh, in this discussion. Uh, all of this is happening this election in the backdrop of an emergency manager. And I've heard so many Detroiters say, why should I vote? Whoever gets elected, they aren't in charge. They don't have the power. The governor and Kevin Orr are calling all of the shots. There's still time for folks to get out and vote. What do you say to people who have that attitude, and perhaps rightfully so? Mm -hmm. I think it's very important that everybody goes out to vote. Um, the emergency financial manager was appointed because of insolvency that's facing the city of Detroit. Mayor Bing indicated that unless something occurred, the city was going to run out of cash um, and not have money to pay its bills by the end of this year, 2013, or as early as January uh, 2014. I think you can either confirm or, or... That's correct. And so the emergency financial manager, whether you like it or not, was needed, and it's there. But people need to vote because after the emergency financial manager's term is over, which is in September, unless... The mayor, the newly elected mayor and newly elected city council agree to keep him on if there's a necessity for it, that person will be gone. Mr. Cocker, what are you hoping to see? You decided not to seek re-election. There was so much chaos with the council and in the mayor's office. So what now? What are you hoping for? Well, I think really the key challenge that's going to be facing the mayor is the issue that we just talked about, which is the emergency manager. So I think, I think for the next mayor of Detroit, there's going to be two things that he needs to do right off the bat. 
First, he's got to come in and put together a real strong of people around him so that he can then go to the emergency manager, most importantly go to the governor, and make the case that says, look, at the end of Kevin Orr's 18-month term, we got this. I have a strong team around me. I have a plan that is workable, and I plan to implement it. Because I think if the, if the mayor is able to make that case to the governor and to the emergency manager, it's going to position him better to allow for Kevin Orr to ride off into the sunset and put things back in the hands of of an elected city government. The other thing that's also going to be critical is building a relationship with this new city council. You're going to have five new council members, so it's a majority new council, also mostly elected from districts, which changes the dynamic considerably. I think building a strong working relationship with the new city council will also help a new mayor to make that case to the governor and to make that case to the emergency manager and also stabilize city government. All Real right. quick question. We only have about 10 seconds left. Yes or no going down the line. Have we reached the time in which we need to be talking about regionalism and maybe a regional government? Yes, and there's always, there's always a position for some functions, not all, but some functions. Uh, uh, the streets, water, sewer, those are regional by nature. All right, Mayor Archer, we're going to talk about it more when we get you over on the webcast. <laughs> Mayor Archer? <laughs> no. No, all right. I would say yes and no. I agree with uh, Mayor Gribbs. There are some areas where it does make sense. Certainly regional transportation is long overdue. I think we need to have one bus system that services Detroit and the surrounding region and which also moves us towards a regional light rail system. But should we regionalize everything? I don't agree with that. All right. All right. Well, it kind of evened out. We got a yes or no and a yes and no. <laughs> well, we thank you all, Mr. Cockrell, Mr. Archer, Mr. Gribbs, and Chuck for thank being you. here. And we should also say that we did invite Mayor Bing. Uh, his schedule did not prevent him from being here, or his schedule prevented him from being here. All right, let's All right. check in with David.